11.2b box plots with similar variability. As we learned in the previous video, 11.2a, box plots show five key values to represent a set of data. It shows the least value, the greatest value, the lower quartile, which is Q1, the first quartile. It shows the upper quartile, which is Q3, the third quartile. And it shows the median, that's Q2, the second quartile. That's the center. And the IQR, the interquartile range, is the length of the box. We can compare two box plots numerically according to their centers or medians, their spread or variability, and the measures of spread would be the range from one tip of a whisker to another or the interquartile range, the IQR, the length of the box. So here we have a box plot. We can see the length of the box, that's the interquartile range, and the range is from the lowest value at the end of the left whisker to the greatest value, the end of the right side whisker. The range and interquartile range, the IQR, are measures of spread. The range is the difference between the greatest and lowest values. The IQR is the difference between Q3, the third quartile, and Q1, the first quartile, the length of the box. Box plots with similar variability should have similar boxes and whiskers. So here we have our box plot of some hours worked in April and May. Comparing their shapes, the position and length of the boxes and whiskers appear to be very similar. In both plots, the left whisker is shorter than the right whiskers. Comparing their centers, here's their centers, their medians, April's median, 30, is greater than May's, which is 25. This means the median hours worked for April is five hours more. Comparing the spreads, both boxes have a similar IQR. April would be 35 minus 17, which gives us an IQR of 18, an interquartile range of 18. May is 37 minus 20, that gives us an IQR of 17. And their whiskers have similar lengths. This one's similar to this one, and this one's similar to this one. So here we can see the IQR for April and the IQR for May. Now this is what we know from these boxes, just by looking at these box plots. The day with the longest hours worked is in May. The maximum number is greater, it's 45. April has a greater variability of hours worked in the bottom 50%. See how this space is greater? And May has greater variability of hours worked in the top 50%. And April's data shows more variation within the box due to a higher IQR. The length of the box is longer, so that means the data shows more variation within the box. Now take a look at these two box plots. It says daily museum visitors, and we have for June and July. The shape, well, both are similar, though July has shorter box and whiskers. This box is shorter. It's got a lesser IQR, doesn't it? And July's median is greater than June. July's median is over here around 75, and June is around 70. And the spread, July's lower IQR, interquartile range, means the middle 50% of its data are closer together than the middle 50% of June. Take a look at July. It's going from about 45 to 90. So this middle 50% of its data is closer together than going from here at 40 to about 95. See? The box is shorter, isn't it? The IQR is lower. So that sounded kind of confusing. What did they mean, middle 50% of its data? So remember, in the last video, 
When we divide the data into four quarters, we have 12 data values here. So I put three in each quarter. We have four quarters. The middle two quarters are the middle half. Two quarters is equal to one half. So we have one here, we have one here, and in the middle, that's the middle half of all the data. That's the middle 50%. So on our box plot, this would be our middle 50%. It would be the IQR, the length of the box. So remember, for the first quartile, after we've split it into four quarters, we find the median of these two and 45 and 45, so that would be 45. For here, between 74 and 76 would be 75. And for Q3, the third quartile, we've got a 90 and 90, so that would be 90. We pick the middle number, or if there's two numbers, we average those two, and then that would be our Q1, Q2, or Q3. If you missed that, there's a link to video 11.2a in the description of this video, and you should really watch it because that was really important information. Okay, we finished the second part of the lesson. We're going to go on to the last part, box plots with different variability. Just remember, with my videos, if you see parts B or C or D, that means there's a part A or a previous part to the lesson that was important that you shouldn't miss, and I usually link them in the description of that video. Have a wonderful day, and let's meet at the last part of the lesson. Bye!